car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. car designer cares about even the tiniest detail which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects prepares and checks every single car that's what makes a virtue motors used car so much more than an ordinary one experience this on the phone online or with a video appointment because at virtue motors it's all in the detail
car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. The car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail.
car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares, and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail.
Jeff. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Virtue Motors Arena in Newcastle for tonight's WBBL Championship Clash between the visitors, the Sheffield Hatters, and the hometown Newcastle Eagles. It's been quite a while since we've been here for a WBBL game, and uh, there's been lots and lots happened since our last trip to, to the Virtue Motors Arena for the Newcastle Eagles ladies game. T a team including uh, one or two personnel changes, not just on the court. Alongside me as ever, Dave Alligan. Now, Dave, I don't know if you want to start with that or you want to start with something different. Well, I think that I've, I've always bought into the concept that a lot rests on how you your performance comes after the Christmas break. But this team hasn't had an opportunity at all to consider that cost, Ben, because they're both dealing with multiple changes. I mean, it started out as a 3-3 draw, uh, both teams losing three really key players um, over that period. And then it's been compounded on the Eagles' front by the injury, first of all, to Jess Eadsforth Yates and then Rachel Bland. But you have to admire from the Eagles' point of view uh, how you know the, the new coach and the players have uh, gone out, they've recruited people who previously played and they're looking you know, to do what they can at uh, the best of the season. The first thing in terms of the Sheffield, and it gives me great pleasure to, to see that um, one of the most respected people in British basketball has come along with the team tonight because they're celebrating 60 years, as you probably know, Jeff, and it's been 60 tremendously successful years, and you have to pay huge credit to Betty Cadona for, for you know, inspiring the way that club's performed. But back to tonight, uh, although they've lost a lot of players... They've still got some pretty good players on there, and there's two players in particular the Eagles are going to have to watch out for. Well, first of all, they know a lot about uh, Nikki because she played at Northumbria for a long time and also played for Durham. But the two they've really got to watch out for are Helen Naylor and Georgia Gale. Yeah, both uh, excellent players, and Georgia Gale's having a fantastic season in particular. But as you see, Helen Naylor still getting it done and uh, just been selected for the British Masters. Uh, sorry, the European Masters team for Great Britain, the over 35 team, um, which is going to be coached, I believe, by Steve Butler from Tees Valley Mohawks. Um, so Helen Naylor, she's still getting it done. It's going to be interesting to see how the Eagles do approach this. Obviously, as you see, new coach in place as well. Um, and, you know, the three players that she Sheffield lost were all Americans as well. So that that's a big, a big for them to turn around, whereas... The Eagles, they lost, obviously, Anna Popovich, Abby Lowe, and Ebony Horton, who is actually, obviously, starting tonight for Sheffield. And just getting... Bear with me a second. I'm just trying to get my starting fives up. The computer seems to be lagging behind. Well, while, you, while you're doing that, let's not forget that, you know, the, they've, got, they've got some talent out there. They've got Maddie McVicker. Um, I've seen quite a lot of the, the, the new girl who's uh, playing from. She's from Chicago. She plays for Newcastle University. Uh, she's uh, not a great scorer, but she's pretty tough on defense and pretty tough on the boards. Uh, you've got Chloe Gaynor, uh, Siprich. And, you know, I, I quite... Uh, I know the lot was worried about whether she was going to be fit to play the season. Well, I like Fernandez as well. Yeah, I, I do as well. But yes, yes, Nicolette. With the three-point shot, which is short, but they recycle it, Sheffield. And get a break in play. I'll just bring you up to date with the starting fives. Helen Naylor's pass was deflected by Chloe Gaynor. Naomi Campbell tries the three-point shot, which is off. And Marina Fernandez comes away with the rebound. Eagles starting with Dora Sipic, Chloe Gaynor, Mary McVicker, Marina Fernandez Pardue, and Lane Murphy. Sheffield responding with Nicolette Fong Lu Key. Georgia Gale, Helen Naylor, Naomi Campbell, and Ebony Horton. And the first points of the game go to the Eagles. And guess who scored them? The girl I said don't, doesn't score much, Lane Murphy. Yeah. She's <laughs> really good one on one move. Up and under move to finish it off. First. 
played her first, well, she played in the cup final, but she was actually injured. The sign of the week of the cup final, and she got injured in training, which sort of kept, seemed to, well done by Dora Simmons. That's really good, aggressive play. Um, yeah, and she got injured going into the cup final, which was obviously her first game, and it was also Noella, Noelia, the, the coach, is her first game as well, so... Um, but she's now fit again. She played last week. She only scored one point, but she had 13 rebounds. And taking the rebounds, there's a great rebound by Helen Naylor. But Chloe Gaynac gets in there for the steal, and Marina Fernandez is away. And that's going to be a foul by Georgia Gale. Well, it's good to see that foul call because in the previous Eagles offense, I'm pretty sure the referees let some really blatant mugging go by, <laughs> which. Uh, for the Eagles and uh, you know back to back to the Hatters and I understand why Helen Naylor was handling that off because the person she handed it to was in a more difficult position than she was. Well Stewart comes on although she has got number 12 on and she's got Gill on her back and I'm sure yeah, it is Maul Stewart that's come on and Naomi Campbell take an early seat. Marina Fernandez at the line makes the first. Pretty early, early substitution by the Hatters and uh, quite an experienced player as well who's been brought out. Got immediately sat next to the coach as well, having a good discussion. Uh, but Marina Fernandez makes both from the line. The Eagles lead early, four to zero. Hong Lu Key into Horton. Horton kicks it back out. Neil for three is off. Fernandez takes the rebound. Is off to the races. Chloe Gaten. Sorry, Dora Sipic almost got free. Maddie McVicker into Lane Murphy down low. Flicks it out to Fernandez. Fernandez works inside, gives an insight to Chloe Gaynor. And that's going to be another foul. Might have just slightly got away with the travel, do you think, Dave? Or did or well, I, I don't know, step? but I mean, there's no question about the foul. And I uh, thought it was quite a good skip pass there from Murphy, which opened up the, uh, the Hatter's defence and a uh, good penetrating move by Chloe. Second foul on Georgia Gale. Chloe Gale makes the first free throw. Two that fouls. Well, well, that's handy because it's going to be interesting to see how coach Vanessa Ellis reacts to that because normally a player gets two fouls within the first two and a half minutes of the game. If you remember when Abby Law came here with Durham, yeah. she picked up two early fouls and she pretty much had to sit the rest of the first half out. Then she exploded in the second, didn't she? But two from the line from Chloe Gaynor. Georgia Gale is staying out there. She did come and have a long chat with Vanessa Ellis. And there's a beautiful move along the baseline and then reverse layup is good from Georgia Gale. Uh, while everybody's admiring Georgia Gale's baseline drive there, not many people are admiring the weak side defense from the Eagles. That was a pretty easy, pretty easy trapping opportunity for the Eagles. Maddie McVicker fouled at the other end by Helen Naylor. End line ball to the Eagles. Three fouls already. Yeah, I've not even played three minutes, and the Sharks are heading for the penalty. Sorry, the Sharks, the Hatters. <laughs> oh, that's a great separation oh by Chloe Gain off uh, Maul Stewart. Goodness. The play, this is not about losing players. This is about the Hatters being all over the place defensively. Picking up crazy fouls, leaving somebody wide open from a simple inbounds baseline. End of baseline blob play. Nicolette Fong Lu Key did reply, and again, Chloe Gain has wide open inside, and the combines well with Lane Murphy, and Lane Murphy puts it in 10 to 4. Well, it doesn't surprise me that Vanessa Ellis has gone to the uh, scorers' table to request a timeout. She's plenty, plenty of organisation to do on defence. Well, Stewart goes for three and misses it. Helen Naylor puts it back. She can't make it, but Ebony Horton's there with the offensive rebound and put back. I think she's probably said, if we don't score, we'll have the time out, but obviously because they haven't called it, so presumably... I don't think you can score. You can call a timeout after your own score, can you? No, you can't. That's right. Yeah. Very sorry, Dave. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mary McVicker for three is off. Ball's going to go dead here, and then we decide whether it's going to be a timeout. It is a timeout to Sheffield. Might not have needed it there because they, they look as if they're going to get the ball back. Well, played four minutes, the score doesn't lie. Eagles are deserved to be 10 6 up. A little bit more thought there from Maddie because about that shot uh, selection, and we might.
Yeah, and uh, you're going to say that, you know, just what, one of the observations I was going to make was the fact that um, with Hannah Shaw not being here for Sheffield, that gives the Eagles an advantage height-wise inside. And it's interesting is that of that 10 points, eight have come from Murphy and Gaynor. Well, the, the no earlier, Coach no earlier has probably looked at uh, the lack of Hannah Shaw on the the defensive capabilities around the basket and she's attacking that uh, that area without question. I mean, it was obvious from looking at uh, Vanessa Ellis in that timeout, all her actions were defensive in terms of how I want you to defend with your feet and active hands. It must be frustrating from a coach when you've, 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 you've probably worked on the game plan pretty much all week. Dora Sipic gets in and off the glass for two. Nice pass by Maddie McVicker. As I say, you've, you've worked on your shape and your format all week and then you, the, the players come out and don't, don't perform to it. Had a nailer going in hard. Kicks it back well, out to Georgia Gale. Sorry to disappoint Vanessa, but uh, the timeout, it was about defence. Then why was on earth was uh, Gaynor allowed to do a face cut and then a, a simple move to basket? And, uh, Ebony Horton shots off. Eagles come away with the rebound. 12-6, 5-23. Fernandez for three, and that's swished through. Marina Fernandez finding her feet and finding her range. And it's a nine point lead for the Eagles at 15 to six. Atlas moving the ball well across. Helen Neal, I thought about shooting. Decides to go inside now, does shoot. Misses off the glass. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell me, but I don't know what Sheffield's shooting percentage is so far, but it won't be very high. No, I don't think the, the stats have quite caught up yet. Marina Fernandez just misses her next three. And that's back on attack. Here's Ebony Horton. She'll go hard to the basket. That's what Ebony Horton does. And she shoots that one in. Yeah, good move from Ebony there. She rode that uh, body contact really well. Travel given. <laughs> Marina Fernandez thought it was, should have been a foul. No, uh, Naomi Campbell well, comes I back out. I don't agree with that. I think that was the right call. But what happened was she did a drib dribbled into a double team and made the decision to try and kick it off too late. Naomi Campbell back on and Maul Stewart takes a rest. Make a left. Georgia Gale for three. He's off. Good rebound though by Campbell. Back to Horton. Horton's going to attack the basket straight away. You could see that was going to happen. And that's going to be a foul on Dora Sipic. Ebony Horton is an all action player. Likes to attack the basket. We saw that when she was in a brief stint with the Eagles. Yeah, I was talking to Betty before the game and uh, the like the, the energy she's bringing to the program. Makes the first free throw. Makes it a five point game, 15 to 10. Gainer inbounds to Mark Vicker, who's guarded by Fong Lu Ki. Into Gainer, Fernandez. Nice pass by Fernandez. Good cut by Mark Vicker, but she couldn't make the layup. But Dora Sipic does well to get it back. And the ball movement was good, but unfortunately, Mary Mark Vicker shots off again. But that will be an Eagles ball. Yeah, absolutely outstanding ball movement there because they saw the, tw the uh, shot clock ticking away. Oh, that's an interesting call. I think you can tell from all the voices shouting at the referee I mean here. Well that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I even call it as, as an Eagles ball. Yeah. Um, very strange, very strange indeed. Ball of the Eagles benches up, but never mind, it's uh, Sheffield ball in there on the offense with Gale into Naila. Back to Gale. A shake and bake from Gale, trying to go past Fernandez. Good defense by Fernandez. Horton, she's tried to drive in. And Georgia Gale knocks down the three. Wow. I'm not sure about that call either. <laughs> But it's 15-3 and it's a seven-point run. Dora Sipic let that ball go out because she thought it was an Eagles yeah, ball. Yeah, uh, off a great back cut as well. Yeah. But, uh, now well, it's the turn of, presumably, no alias call this time out. Yeah, absolutely.
A car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. So yeah, uh, Noelia called that time out because uh, it's a 7-0 seven, seven run by Sheffield to bring them back to within two points. 15-13. Um, but again, watching uh, Vanessa Ellis's timeout, all the gesticulations have been about what she wants from defence. And, and clearly she wants a lot more pressure on the ball. It's going to be Sheffield ball, chance to level the game up. Yeah, I, mean, I understand the seven orbit. I mean, it's a little bit flattered by the fact that uh, there was a long-range three there from uh, Georgia, Gale. Georgia Gale. Neil out with the ball now. Hands off to Gale. She tries to kick it out to Campbell. Ebony Horton back inside. Campbell again finds Neil inside. Nice turnaround by Helen Neil. Two points in the paint. Yeah, you you can't let Helen Neil get you uh, well, that's a backing you down inside. Bigger. And uh, Helen Neil has picked that one up easy strolls almost to the basket and lays it in and suddenly Sheffield are in front and that seven point run has become an 11 point run well before you know it two errors the first the defensive error of allowing Helen Neal to seal the defender under the basket and then secondly really wayward pass and there's another one yeah Chloe Gainer throwing the one away Georgia Gale picks it up Helen Neal a lovely pass inside and Naomi Campbell finishes that was really smart basketball by the Hatters the assist of the night, Jeff. That. Yeah, so far, definitely. Really smart play by Helen Naylor. The Eagles made a very good start, but they just seem to have, like, really just lost their way a little bit here. Fernandez is going to drive in hard. Doesn't make the basket, but she gets the rebound, but she can't gather it in, and Ebony Horton's away, and that's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul called on Chloe Gaynor. Well, I know she's looking at referee in disbelief, but I mean that was a clear, clear on sportsman. No, like yeah, she made no, no mistake at all. And, and the, the thing was, what a waste of a foul because the Eagles had three other defenders back to protect the basket. And of course, now you've got a situation where Ebony's going to shoot and then get the ball back. Yeah. Very solid free throw shooter. Makes the first. And the second. And it's now a 15 point run. Should have made a couple of changes. Abby Whitehouse has come on. Maul Stewart's come back on. Helen Neal takes a break and Nicolette Lee Fong takes a break and that Georgia Gale going all the way to the basket and is fouled in the act of shooting. Fouls on five on the head. That's Marina Fernandez. Her first foul. Georgia Gale mating two and going to the line for the extra one. Well, obviously. I can't believe it was 15 60 if it was. Yeah, I know. Well, you know. Basically, as far as scoring is concerned, uh, Helen and Georgia have taken over, aren't they? But yeah. the other person, of course, who we should have known would be figuring there is Ebony because I think, was she the Eagles' leading scorer when she left? She was, yeah. And there's the ball again. Or Chuck Wet, who's come on and she's just turned the ball over. Sheffield with a chance to score even more. If they score here, it'll be 20 points unanswered. Whitehouse turns the corner, gives it back to Horton. Horton into Campbell, out to Gale. Gale will drive hard. Flicks it back out. Ebony Horton for three. It's missed. Helen Neal took a great rebound. Oh, sorry, Neil, Naomi Campbell took a great rebound. And Sheffield are able to recycle it again. And Georgia Gale goes for another three. Good rebound by Dora Sipic, though, off the miss. 
Sipic forcing the pace. Gives it to Fernandez. Fernandez back inside to Sipic, but that's a hard pass. Sipic can't bring it in. She's yeah. going to be called for a foul, I believe. Yeah. I mean, there's two reasons, obviously, for that run. One is uh, Sheffield had a score as they're getting, getting in gear, but also they are responding to their coach his desire to have much better defence. They're certainly getting better defensive positions off the ball. They're getting hands in passing lanes and they're making it more difficult for the Eagles, A, to penetrate and B, to move the ball around the perimeter. Problem sorted out by the referees. 22 left on the shot clock, 22 on the ball. Ebony Horton, White House, gives it to Gale. Gave the Gale back to Ebony Horton. And back to Ball Stewart. That's short. Fernandez up for the rebound. Maddie McVicker tidies up, but it's a foul by Campbell. Why would you foul somebody that far from the basket? Probably think she's making yeah, a possibly well runs ball, I don't know. Yeah, I know they raced into three quick fouls, but that was then the end of the ball, so they weren't in the penalty. Shot clock hasn't still thought about started again now. Don't know why the shot clock started, it should be off. Maddie McVicker goes to the basket, can't make it. Dora Simmons does a great job in the rebound and is fouled as she tries to put it back and she'll go up the line for two. Horton, I believe. So 1.8 left on the clock. Dora Sipic on the line. Makes the first. <laughs> makes both. Eagles perfect from the line. Gale inbounds. Whitehouse is going to put that up from halfway, but that's well short. So that's the end of the first quarter. And an interesting first quarter, to say the least. The Eagles were up 15 to 6 and then went down 24 to 15 and scored the last two points. So it ends with Sheffield taking an early lead, 24 17. And probably once they sorted their defence out, probably well deserved. Well, it was pretty much a, a first quarter of two halves, wasn't it? Or, yeah. two, or two parts. The Eagles made a good start. Sharks were having all sorts of troubles with the defence. The Sharks were getting getting looks at the basket and weren't converting them at all. And then just all of a sudden, uh, after the second time out there, the Sharks really started to get a little bit more into the gear and the sort of form we'd expect from them, and particularly from, from the three scorers, Ebony Horton, Georgia Gale, and Helen Naylor. In terms of uh, the Eagles, they started off trying to get the ball into into Murphy and then uh, you know was fairly successful to start with and then they're more a little bit more around the perimeter but they're not getting any good looks since Sheffield have stepped up the tempo on defense I must remind you Dave that it's the Hatters oh not the Sharks oh dear <laughs> well we do entertain our customers don't we we do and I think the thing is as well sometimes it is I, I do I do exactly the same yeah. sometimes I you have to somebody stop and think yourself. Yeah. So just looking at those scorers, just to, just for um, for the Hatters, Ebony Horton's made an excellent start. Not just eight points, but she's also got four rebounds as well. Georgia Gale eight points, and uh, Helen Neela four points and two rebounds, two steals as well. For the Eagles, it's uh, Dora Dora Sipic with four, Chloe Gaynor with four. Marina Fernandez with five and Leon Murphy with four and uh, Dora Sipic has also got five rebounds and Marina Fernandez three. So Sheffield ball to start us off in the second quarter. To 
Whitehouse. And here's Gale thinking about the three. Fernandez Gordon. Ball moved around. Wong Liu Key. Was it the Whitehouse? Well, uh, that, was <laughs> that was a fairly clear charge. <laughs> it's almost an assault rather than a charge. Yeah. Um, White House on, and it was Mary McVicker who took it. Yeah, it was called a block, but uh, I'm not sure McVicker got there on time. It's interesting when you mentioned the scorers there from the Eagles that you didn't mention McVicker, and you know, this time last year she was scoring for fun. Well, I, I, I don't mean in any way disrespectful to any of the Eagles players, but probably a lot easier to score for fun when you when you. Porter and Alison Gorell in the back court. Well, that's a big factor for sure. <laughs> Whitehouse, she's been in energetic since she come on. Stewart can't make that. Murphy takes the rebound and gives it to Fernandez. Fernandez gives it to Sipic. And that's going to be a third foul on Georgia Gale, I believe. Yep. Yeah, that's going to help uh, the Eagles. Not only that, but uh, the Eagles, I don't know what they've had, Jeff. They must have had a fair number of attempts from the free throw line. Eagles are actually six of six for the from the yeah. free throw line. So then this is going to be the seventh and eighth shots. I'm pretty sure Vanessa Ellis won't risk. Uh, First miss from Dora Sipic. Yeah, she's not going. She's not going to risk Gale Georgia Gale this yet. Yeah, this quarter. Unless she needs, unless of course Eagles want to go on a run, and she, that would make. It's it's very it, difficult, would, it would have to be something very distinctive for yeah. her to put her back in. She gets the fourth. <laughs> Second half's really tough for her. Dora Sipic makes one or two. Cuts the gap to six points. Nicolette Leaf. She comes again. Fong Lu Key for two. Small oh, that, players. That, isn't that she? was just too easy. Yeah. One simple fake. No rotation at all on the Eagles' defense. Never mind help the health of they didn't even get the first rotation in. Sheffield putting a press on here. Foul on Ebony Horton. And that's that list telling her, yes, it was a foul and you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're racing away. I mean, I think they got the three fouls in two and a half minutes in the first quarter. They got the three fouls in, in less than a minute and a half. In the second quarter, is that is that call it starting the quarter aggressively? And, and <laughs> they nearly got the fourth there. Could easy have got that McVicker that short. Looks really conf confidence-wise, it's not shooting the ball well at all. He has White House, nice pass to Fong Lu and she's puts it in for two. We are. I'm trying to say Fong Lu Key, Dave, because I think it would, it's unprofessional if I call her Nicky. Nicky. Yeah, Nicky, but it, it, it's, it's, so hard, it's so hard to not do that. Lane Murphy. Or Chukyu Etu. Well, Murphy's showing despair at the fact that the ball didn't reach her, but she actually had the easy layup herself. Oh, wow, that was far too easy for Abby Whitehouse. Just what you said before, Eagles almost parted the waves for her. Let I go in and suddenly it's 30 to 18 again, 12 point lead. Fernandez turns down the three. Chukueto back to Fernandez. Maddy McVick is not scoring, it makes it very difficult for the Eagles. Well, you know, you look at that move there, Matt Vicker made a great backdoor move. If Fernandez had a little bit more patience, she took three players with her on that backdoor cut. There was an easy kick out to the wing for a wide open shot. She just tried to force the player to the the pass to the player making the back door cut. I think that would be Sheffield in the penalty with 7.34 to go. Yep, Sheffield in the penalty, 7.34 to go. Next ball will be a well done by Nicolette Fong Lu Ki traps the ball, but it's Eagles' ball. Eagles need to be aggressive here now with seven and a half minutes to go. And Sheffield in the penalty, they need to try and take advantage of it. Now 
It's a turnover. Clock was ticking down. Marina Fernandez forced the ball, lost it. Alan Neela back out. That's a hard shot there by uh, Charlie McGrath. Well, <laughs> certainly didn't call glass on that one. <laughs> the first one was well off. The second one, from way out, just hit the, the glass and went in. Makes the three. Fernandez for three at the other end. Misses. Good rebound by Lillian Murphy, but she can't make the layup. An awful lot of contact being allowed under the basket. Sipic and Thornley come back on. Fernandez and Chuku Etu come out. Gonna go yep, it is Eagles yeah, ball. Yeah, it was um, tipped by Stewart. Gainer made a back seal on the defensive play, and it was a nice idea, but it was was intercepted by the Hatters defense. I'm going to practice saying Hatters, Jeff. <laughs> the ball went out at the sideline, and the referee decided it was going to be end line, but he's corrected it. Thornley. Gainer, and that's going to be a travel. Oh, what a pity. What a great move. Just didn't get the ball down in time. Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with the official, but yeah. it, it was a great move. And obviously, she lifted a pivot foot before the ball hit the floor. On the key, McGrath. Miela thought about it again. Is it the ball? Stewart, she tacks a basket. Doesn't make the two. Murphy takes another rebound. Into Mark Vicker. Mark Vicker streaking towards the basket. Misses again, but Dora Simic was there, and then Chloe Gainer. The Eagles certainly are getting a lot of rebounds. Oh, yeah. Need to take advantage of that. Still, still down 13, 33 to 20. Hong Lu Key. Yes, Stewart for three. That's in and out. Chloe Gainer picks up the rebound. Gives it to Murphy. Across to Mark Vicker. That's, that's exactly what we, we were talking about. Yeah. We've got to attack the paint. She saw, she created the space, took the straight line drive. What we need now is... Uh, Time out, Vanessa Ellis, and we'll go to an advert. Marie McGrath will go up the length to shoot two, looking for her first points of the game. And I think two things for me. First of all, obviously, Sheffield being in the penalty, Eagles have got to attack the basket. And they've also got to take advantage of the fact that Georgia Gale's off the court. Yeah, well that's, two, that's two good points. I think um, I'm not faulting the effort on, on either side. I just think we need a little bit more quality and execution from both teams. Yep. I think... Uh, Possibly Sheffield could have been a little bit further in front, but uh, it's still every and it's still anybody's game. And we saw a game last night where the Eagles men were up by 15 with only 14 minutes or 16 minutes to go, and they turned that one. Plymouth turned that one around. And so Mary McVicker on the line, shooting two, makes the first free throws at the moment. The thing that keeping the Eagles in the game. Two from Mark Vicker. Eagles now just missed two. Horton tries to drive in. Better defence from the Eagles yeah, this time. Really good, really good uh, lateral movement there from Sipic. Neela. Attack hard. Good blocking. Great block by Chloe Gainan. 
comes with the ball. That's well, a foul by Neil and Chloe Gain and will go to the line. It's going to be sure a long second I quarter. I <laughs> I'm not sure what Helen Neil was thinking of there because um, she, she tried to force a shot against a much taller player and uh, Gainer uses the height well this season and then crazy foul, miles from the basket and you're already in the penalty. And it's interesting because when you were talking there, Dave, I was watching Helen Neil and she was amazed to see Chloe Gain go to the line. Because obviously you hadn't realised they were in the penalty. Again, and this is the first. And this is a pair. Of course, that's one thing. It's getting to the line. You've then got yeah. to knock them down. Nice form on the shot, but she didn't get the roll on either of the two. Hongu Key swaps passes with Campbell and then gives it to Horton. Horton drives hard back to Hongu Key. Has a three point shot going up and in. Well, thinking as a whistle that one, no glass there. Lillian Murphy looked a bit disappointed in herself. Let's not forget uh, Nicolette spent a lot of her life in the northeast playing for both Durham and uh, well, Northumbria. That's a foul by Dora Sipic trying to get across to intercept the pass. Believe it or not, that's the first Eagles foul this quarter. It's actually the third. They, they've only got five fouls in, in total the Eagles, and three of them are on Dora Sipic. Don't know if the coach has noticed that or not. Has taken Lane Murphy out. Looks like she might be struggling a little bit, Lane Murphy. Come to the bench and she's going to go straight back on or no she's going to bring Leila on for those who don't know Leila she she is a she has previous National League experience she played with uh, with Worcester uh, but also she's better known for uh, being the Eagles men's strength and conditioning coach that's right Leila and hopefully I get this right Ben Yaha going to be Layla all night to me. <laughs> Charlie McGrath's three-point shot is off, but Helen Naylor battles well, gets the rebound. Ebony Horton going in hard. That's going to be a foul on Ruth, Ruth, Thorn yeah. Yeah, Ruth Thornley. Defense by fouls at the moment, it seems to be. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ruth is one of the veterans that the Eagles persuaded to come out of retirement. Needed some players, obviously, when they lost those three. Anthony Horton, Campbell, Campbell drives the baseline, gives it inside to Nicolette, and the ball is on the floor. And well, I'm not sure quite what happened, but the Eagles. Have come well, I think away the 24-second clock went off, yeah. but if you've clearly got possession of the ball, you just play on. Didn't make it. Marina Fernandez didn't make it, but another excellent offensive rebound by. Chloe Gain and the putback was good and she was fouled so she's got a chance of a three point play. Abby Whitehouse comes on for Charlie McGrath. Well, you, you mentioned two things before, Jeff. One is about uh, Gail being on the bench, and secondly, the fact that they're in the penalty. So the Eagles really have got to try and use this those two factors to try and get a single-digit uh, lead down to a single-digit lead, and they go into the dressing room. Ebony Horton drives to the basket and uh, is given continuation. The basket is good. Foul once again on Ruth Thor Thornley. Two quick fouls yeah. on Ruth. Clear con continuation there. I thought she rolled that foul really well and really concentrated on the spot where she was kissing it off the backboard. Totally agree. And obviously, Ebony Thornton, a bit like Abby Lowe when she came back with Durham, proving to be a thorn in the Eagles' side. And the point that you just made there as, as well, Dave, about, you know, they've got to try and take an advantage of this is that they're not at the moment. It's still 14 points the gap. It's 3.43 still to go. 
I think am I right in thinking that our northeast neighbours Durham had the uh, unenviable task of a trip to London today or is that tomorrow I think it's tomorrow it's isn't tomorrow, it tomorrow I think yeah yeah London actually played in the uh, semi-final of the WBBL trophy today and uh, I was looking at this game I was just talking to you about it before uh, it was 39-28 to London at half time and it finished up 82-30 uh, 39 so well they scored one point in the second half 10 points only 10, 10 points 10 points 6 in one quarter 4 in another here that comes back out offensive foul call on the Eagles like on Chloe Gaynor her second Horton puts it in and gets it straight back she knew she was going to get it back as well Whitehouse turns the corner and extra pass is good and so is the three point shot from Helen Neal yeah. a nice basketball by Sheffield that double double ball reversal is good in any case but when the double ball reversal gets in the hands of Helen Neal on the end of it then watch out Ruth Thornley gives it to Maddie McVicker McVicker as Lee from the key all over her, but she gets into the paint and puts it in. Did it the hard way, yeah. but uh, she pulled it off. White House into Neela, but that's stolen by Lane Murphy. Yeah, good defence. That was that was the bed arm previously. She'd been letting Helen seal her and get in front of her, but she cut her right off there. Marina Fernandez, little bounce pass into Chloe Gaina. She's going to back Helen Neela down, turn around. Jump shot is no good. Ebony Horton comes away with it. Nice pass there by Nicholas. Well, I know, Nick, no Naomi Cam, she was simply wasn't in control ever of that, and she really had to concentrate on. Marty McVicker turned the corner yeah. well there, but it's fouled by Fong Lu Key. Small Stewart will come back in. Yeah, that was a hard enough pass for Naomi Campbell to catch, but she had to concentrate on the catching bit first. And then she had plenty of time to execute the shot. Time out call by the Eagles with 2.27 to go and we'll go to an advert. A car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. So just uh, 2.27 to go. Eagles down by 15. It's 41 to 26. Sheffield definitely getting their defence, even though the got those fouls they're still playing really good defense and come up with a number of steals and they're looking a lot more efficient on the offensive end he yeah looking for answers yeah I mean uh, the, and Sheffield are scoring enough points to, to uh, make it difficult for the Eagles just to rely on the free throws they're picking up so it's Stewart Neela Whitehouse Horton and Fong Lu Key Fernandez Chukueto Gaina, McVicker and Murphy and Maddie McVicker on the line to shoot two. This is the first. Normally pretty solid from the line. Certainly was last season. Missed two or three at the moment. Makes that one up. Single point. You could almost feel us. Oh, well, we actually, we I'm not sure. Under, under the rule, under, yeah, the, under the rules, that yeah. was not a backcourt. You have yeah. to have th all three parts go That's over. Right. Yeah, yeah. And only one, one. yeah. yeah. White House, it's even turned that corner so easily. Helen Neal at the other end, knocks down the three again. Helen Neal having a big game. Yeah, and, and well spotted Ebony Horton. She had a decent shot, but she very quickly realised that Helen Neal had a much better shot. Helen Great Neal. ball reversal. And, of course, the thing about that corner three, Jeff, as uh, all coaches point out to the players, it is the shortest distance to make a three on the court. Liam Murphy drives well to the basket, but can't make the layup. Horton again. Sheffield just that little bit quicker and moving the ball quicker as well and here's Helen Neal again this time she's off 
Who again takes the rebound. Wouldn't surprise me to see that the Eagles have massively out out rebounded Sheffield, but at the moment they're not going in. Not one from Mac Vicker. Is off. And Stewart it was who took the rebound. John Luke Key is off. Once again, Chloe Gainer takes the rebound. Fernandez over inside the last minute. Chukwueto finds Lane Murphy. Did a nice seal by Lane. Back to Chloe Gainer, back to Fernandez for three. Is off. Long pass by Fong Key finds Whiteside in. What a block Whitehouse. from Mac Vickers, and then what an interception from Fernandez. Absolutely, Whitehouse went there, and uh, the block by Mary Mac Vickers, not the biggest, but it was she got across the block and picked up well. So the Eagles now back on offense. Using Gainer as a, a screen, puts it into Gainer. So again, a nice turnaround, breaks the two. Maybe that's something um, Gain is tending to be coming in high in the uh, previous offences. Maybe that low post is a good position for her. Evan Lee Horton went coast to coast but couldn't make it. And that ends the first half with um, the Sheffield Hunters up 44 to 29. The Eagles got off to a great start and uh, were 15 6 in front. So by my reckoning, that's been a 38 to 14 turnaround. Yeah, I mean, the, the improvement in the Hatters defense has uh, made it more increasingly more difficult as the game's gone on for the Eagle to find any easy points. They've had those opportunities from the line. Unfortunately, they didn't make enough of them for it to be a real impact. And uh, you have to say Hatters are comfortable at a 15 point halftime lead. I will have a look at some stats for you and come back to you in about 10 minutes or so's time. Car designer cares about even the tiniest detail, which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares, and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail.
car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. Car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares, and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares, and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail.
car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. car designer cares about even the tiniest detail which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects prepares and checks every single car that's what makes a virtue motors used car so much more than an ordinary one experience this on the phone online or with a video appointment because at virtue motors it's all in the detail car designer cares about even the tiniest detail which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects prepares and checks every single car that's what makes a virtue motors used car so much more than an ordinary one experience this on the phone online or with a video appointment because at virtue motors it's all in the detail Okay, so we're back um, for the second half with Sheffield leading 44 to 29. Eagles haven't had, a, as you said, they hadn't had a home game for quite some time, but their next home game is uh, with the men not playing on Friday the 25th of March. The ladies will be playing with a full court setup. Um, all four areas of the arena available for you. If you want to come down to that game, that'll be an absolute humdinger of a game because it's our visitors from over the border, the Caledonia Pride, who will be in the house that night. Uh, so that's a Friday, the 25th of March, 7.30 tip-off, Newcastle Eagles versus Caledonia Pride. But back to tonight's game, 44-29 it was at half-time. Just a quick look at the Eagles scorers, top scorer for the Eagles, Chloe Gaynor with 11 points. She's also got five rebounds. And then we have Marina Fernandez with five points, five rebounds, four assists. Dora Simic, five points and six rebounds. 
Merriman Vicar four points and Liam Murphy four points and five rebounds. They've got 25 rebounds, the Eagles. They are out, out rebounding Sheffield, but they're not outscoring Sheffield. And Nicolette Fong Lu Key has 12 points. Helen Neal has 10 points. Ebony Horton 10 points and seven rebounds. Helen Neal, Neal has also got four rebounds. Um, and the Chloe sorry Georgia Gale who's had to sit out nearly all of the second quarter she's still got eight points in only ten minutes of play and I'm probably expecting to see her come back out to at least start the third quarter so what have the Eagles got to do differently Dave? Well I don't think there's any doubt at all about the fact that uh, Georgia Gale will be starting this third quarter uh, although Vanessa might think that the comfortable lead at 15 I'm not. I'm not sure. They're, they're, they're the way they're playing their offense is, is the way they do it. They're, they're spending a lot of time putting posts in there, where maybe they need to open it up a little bit more and have a little bit more spacing. Sometimes I find that the spacing they're, they're running into each other. I mean, the way that Sheffield are up, because Sheffield are overplaying pretty much everything, giving a lot of opportunities for back cut. But when they're making those back cuts, they're running into a teammate. So yeah, Georgia Gale is out there with. Um Nicolette Fong Lu Key, Ebony Horton, Helen Neela, and Naomi Campbell. For the Eagles, it's Mary McVicker, Dora Sipic, Marina Fernandez, Chloe Gaynor, and Lane Murphy. About to get on now, it's Sheffield ball. 29 44, 20 minutes of basketball to come. And the ball's in the hands of Georgia Gale to get us underway for the second half. He puts it into Neela. Skip past the Campbell. Campbell spins past Chloe Gaynor rather easily and lays it in for two. Sheffield off and running. Good first offence. Eagles press, being pressed by Sheffield. But Dora Sipic gets it over halfway. Gives it to Maddie McVicker. Lane Murphy. Fernandez is going to attack the basket. Does attack the basket, gets a good off the glass and in for Marina Fernandez. Yeah, and they cut a pretty open spread there, which worked really worked for them. McVicker went for the steal, didn't quite get it. From Luke Keys in for two. That was a matter of uh, the transition deep part, defense part was good. They got back, they made sure there was no layup, but nobody recovered onto the shooters. Maddie McVicker knocks down a three from in the corner. Well, what we've seen so far in, le in less than a minute is a lot better spacing from the Eagles. 34-48 with McVickers three there. Neil at Fong Luke. She attacks the basket, gives it to Georgia Gale. Meet and drink for Georgia Gale, that one. Although it did take a little bit of a foot wipe as it went in. It was still in for two. Well, I think you mentioned when you were talking about points, Nicolette's the top scorer and nobody put under any pressure at all there, which made it easy for her to make that assist to uh, Georgia Gale. Marina Fernandez can't come up with two. Ebony Horton with the rebound and tries to come away with the ball. I think she tried to bounce it out of bounds off an Eagles player. Maddie McVicker had a chance to go for the three, but decides to drive in for two, but doesn't make the layup. Neil gets a hand to it and Gale tidies up. Inside and outside, Nicolette Fonglu key for two. It's just seem to be getting to their spots quite easily at the moment. Yeah, well, the Eagles are getting back on defense, but they're not locating where their uh, matchups are. Yeah, a Murphy, Gale all over that, and it's going to be given as an offensive foul, I believe. Too aggressive, and she looks like. Georgia Gill's taking a real blow there. And she's up on her feet. Well, both being silent. Does that mean we agree with that call? I was just making sure that Georgia Gill was okay. I'm just checking what was going on. It was definitely uh, a foul. Uh, uh, was it? Yeah. I thought it was a pretty tough offensive move. Mm. Oh, sorry, I said definitely a foul. It was definitely called a foul. Georgia Gale from the free throw line knocks down another two. Sheffield scoring it well. Yeah, here. well, nobody's closing down shooters. And Sheffield are making it very tough for the Eagles even just to pass the ball. 
So Sipic is just going to go driving in, just make it. Helen Naylor probably should have took that ball, but Lane Murphy manages to get it in for two. Georgia Gill flicks it out. Hongu Key back out to Georgia Gill. Georgia Gill away downtown, but it almost drops. Double dribble. We're getting looked a little bit incredulous at the referee there. Well, it's difficult for us to tell. I mean, we, there was no, we had no real vision. We're in a great position up here in some ways. Jonah Sipic gets the steal. <laughs> steal? That was a mugging. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Georgia Gill actually did well, really, not to react. because it, it was almost as if she was Well, like she stood there in disbelief. Yeah, but, but she's back at the other end. And says, there you go, take right. that. If you're not going to give us a foul, I'll just shoot the three instead. Let's analyse this so far there, banging down outside shots. So we've got to step our defence out quicker. Yeah, because they're beginning to run away with it. 21 points in front. And no call either way. Well... <laughs> I'm looking at you, David. No, well, <laughs> don't look at me when it comes to refereeing <laughs> decisions. I'm not very good at them. Well, all I'm saying is both sets of players at the moment are incredulous in the way this game's being called. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say it's consistent. That, that, you know, it's not like my favourite one team or other. They're just calls are just very strange. and it, that, That's why they, you get these silences from both probably myself and Dave. We're just like thinking, what the call now? It's good ball moving by Sheffield, but good hands by Dora Sipic, and the ball yeah. comes out to Fernandez. Will she attack the basket? That's going to be a charge. On Fernandez, not necessarily once again agreed with it. Well, you know, what we have to accept here is there's some decisions going on at the minute that feel questionable, but without the without the advantage of an action replay, yeah, you don't very know. very difficult. Yeah, is, yeah. You know, I don't know whether Nicolet there was legally established or not. It looked a good offensive move. It looked the wrong call, but you really need the benefit, and that referee had a much better position than we did. Nicolette had to take a seat after getting that, uh, taking that charge. I think that was watch out, the train's coming. <laughs> Georgia Gale, Sipic is in again. Here's the knee. Well, Ooh. can't Ooh, fault the it. Eagles' effort, can you? They're prepared to get the knees dirty. I Diving on loose balls. I think for me, the, y y y Kind of like they never question effort in, in the ladies' games. They're always giving a hundred percent. I mean, it's twenty-one points down, but they're not. They're going to fight for every point and every ball. Sipic into F Fernandez. A lot of contact from both Ebony yeah. Warner and Georgia Gale, but nothing called. And again, I mean, there's a clear tactic coming from now. I don't know whether you noticed there, Jeff, but uh, the double team in as mu yeah. the ball as much as they can now. So these have got to be pretty smart. Sometimes you need a, you know, a jump pass to get out of that double team because they're catching the ball with the back to the basket and they've no vision on anybody. Max Vickard in for two, doesn't make it. Where's the foul going to be called this time? It's going to be called on Maddie Max Vickard. Oh, that was a totally innocuous contact. It's, 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 it, at the moment, no, it it's no, no, Sheffield got a good float to their game, but yeah. now everything's been broken down. Yeah, well, you know, that didn't interfere with anything the Sheffield team were doing. They are possession of the ball, they were able to make the pass. Ebony Horton back out to Naylor. Naylor doesn't make it, but she gets her own rebound and puts it back off the glass for two. There seems to be an awful lot of contacts being let go here as well. And Murphy gives it to Mark Vicker. Mark Vicker turns the corner, tries to get to the basket, does roll the ball in, and the foul will be on Aisling Knee. Give him a push. Mark Vicker for two and goes yeah. to the line. 
she she caught the def that help side defense there completely by surprise because she turned that corner very very quickly. Makes the extra one. Andy McFick are now into double figures on ten. Great pass by Georgia Gale. Knee doesn't give a good pass back. Sipic picks it up. Fernandez is going to attack the basket, but uh, that pass to Chloe Gaynor is wild to say the least. Whitehouse back in as the knee comes out. Vanessa Ellis says, Come and have a seat now, I just want to have a little chat with you. Good coaching during the game. Horton to Gale. Sheffield off the run again. Whitehouse, Stewart. Neil inside, but Gale's going to shoot the free, doesn't go. Murphy takes another rebound, comes away with the ball, pushes it. Sipic into Gaynor. Gaynor waits it, puts the ball in for two points. And I think Vanessa Ellis has decided to take a, a time out and we'll go to an advert. Okay, so Vanessa Ellis took a time out there. Eagles have only closed at the 18, but I guess she probably just wants to make sure they don't don't get back into it. Well, you mean complacency might set in. Yeah. I think she's obviously unhappy with that last basket, but at the end of the day, they're doing more good things on defence than they're doing bad, and I think that double teaming has really been uh, really been bothering the Eagles. But on the other end, uh, I think Noelia's got the point out to some of the basics here about closing down because they're closing down, but then they're not challenging it the person with the ball in any way shape or form and that's why they're getting off so many clean looks at the basket you've got to close down you've got to challenge the shooter and turn her into a dribbler if that's the, what you must do and then being able to contain it's not just a matter of closing down active hands active feet when you get there Eagles coming up with a bit of their own double team in there Emily Horton who goes in deep, Helen Naylor out to Georgia Gale, Georgia Gale takes a step back, gives it back to Helen Naylor, Helen Naylor into the two point zone, Dora Simic takes an excellent rebound off the missed shot, Helen Naylor tries to get there, Marina Fernandez for two, yeah. back down to 16. Gale felt she doesn't want to pick up the four so she just stood and let her make the layup. Into Stewart, Stewart gets it round to Naylor, Naylor up for two, is off. Good hands by Chloe Gain and Dora Simic once again comes away. Dora Simic is the probably the one player that has blossomed since the three other Eagles left. Certainly getting more court time and looking more aggressive. Not necessarily a good top scorer, but she's certainly getting lots of rebounds. Yeah. Oh, I thought, you know, it seems a long time, as you say, since we had the game, but I thought Gainer and, Gainer and Sipic were, you know, playing the high-low together quite well. Gainer's three-point shot was off, but Simic has come up with the offense, long offensive rebound, and the Eagles can recycle. Seven seconds left on the 14. Mark Vicker for three. He's just off. Dora Simic, well... Showing a physical side <laughs> to her game. <laughs> she completely cleaned out with the defensive player. But then, unfortunately, couldn't, couldn't get to pick the ball up. Hey, full marks for effort for her there. She really chased down after that offensive board. Got quite physical as well when she got it. Takes a seat, pretty unhappy to take the seat, but I think that's more. Or oh, that's well, there's those two Sheffield players unmarked under the basket there. And uh, Nicolette Hong Lu Key's long pass found Abby Whitehouse and she laid it in for two. It's time for a coach to be standing up and shouting, see man, see ball. He's brought those possible half court, but I think it's, it's given. Our live streaming team need to understand the proper rules about this <laughs> half court. Maddie McVicker is off for two. 
And Anila comes away with the ball. Little pass to Georgia Gale. The wide toes back to Anila. Anila goes round gain out. Doesn't get the two point shot though. But it was nice basketball again. Helen Anila almost comes up with a steal on Fernandez. Two minutes to go, 43-61. That's a foul by Hong Luki. Well, when you consider how the wrapped up fouls in the first half, that's the Hatters only their only their second foul in this quarter. And the way the game's been called, I think it's probably a lack of call. It's probably been more physical in this <laughs> quarter than the first two. Nice pass inbounds. McVicker for two is good. Now that's the man in Matrick we know and love from last year. You get open, great catch and shoot. Dribble drive, pull up, catch and shoot. Extra pass by Hong Lu Key is excellent to Whitehouse in the corner. And she, as Dave says, that's the shortest route for a three point shot and knocks it down very nicely indeed. But also, it's the hardest place to recover on. which drives in back out to McVicker McVicker spins and gives it out to Liam Murphy from the elbow can't make it great box out by Georgia Gale on Marina Fernandez Sheffield away again here's Naylor again that one's in and out Fernandez did well to get back because I was just about to say she looked as if she was just puffing a wee bit there but she managed to get back and got the rebound here's McVicker Gonna go hard at the basket, but Stewart's in there and it's the ball gathered and that'll be a Sheffield ball. Naomi yeah, Campbell. Maddie just did one one extra dribble there too many and wasn't able to kick the ball out to the player who was wide open on the wing. I'm pretty sure that was her intent. She just took it that extra dribble too far into the uh, uh, help defender. Campbell back on for Helen Naylor. Georgia Gale pops up, doesn't make it. Chloe Gear takes the rebound. Followed by Maul Stewart. Ali Chukwetu about to check in. Coming in for Chloe Gear who's Took a bang in the face there and just looks like they're struggling just to focus the highs. She seems okay. She sat next to the physio, but she's not asking for any help. That was Georgia Gale's fourth foul, but we're all we're inside the last minute of the third. She's played the whole of the third and only picked up that one more foul, but she is now on four. Great steal by Abby Whitehouse on Marina Fernandez. Here's Georgia Gale bringing it over the halfway line, giving it back to Whitehouse. Gale calling the play. And that is the play, and it's a nice play as well. Really good play by Sheffield. Eagles defence went missing. Stewart knocks down the two. Inside the last 10 seconds. Maddie McVicker. Uh, Eagles lacking that spacing again. Puts up the three on the buzzer and doesn't make uh, it. Eagles have really got this spacing sorted out, Jeff. You saw that. That's the third or fourth time in the last five or six offences where they've had three players literally in a bunch. Interesting as well, but uh, <laughs> Maddie McVicker, after she took, I mean, it was almost like a Hail Mary shot, but when she took it and it didn't go in, she just sort of stood and looked at the referees as if to say, are you not going to call that? And then as she walked off court, Vanessa Ellis actually went across, shook her hand, shook her head, put her little arm around as if to say, I totally agree with you. Well, talking about <laughs> chucking, we're having to chuck a duck look. <laughs> yeah. Chuck a duck. Yeah, but in reality, it's a difficult position from the Eagles to come back from. You're 21 down. Uh, you're, you're not really getting things like your basic spacing and stuff right you're not closing down their shooters this, you can't put everything right in one go but i think obviously noelia has got to just choose two or three things and really get this team to work on those in this final quarter i think for the eagles it's it, you know it's going to be tough for them for now the rest of the season i mean they've had to bring four players back you know well three players back who probably didn't we weren't expecting to play at all yeah. and then obviously 
and took the American, as you said, from Newcastle University. Um, who looks as if she can play in this league, let's be fair. But uh, there's, there's that sort of, but losing Jess Eadsworth Yates as well, that doesn't help the Eagles at all. But yeah. uh, Sheffield are, you know, pretty solid and team. And Rachel Bland injured as well. Absolutely, A bit yeah. of veteran experience yeah. there. And again, you just look at Vanessa in that in that quarter break and her actions are say, showing the players what she wants. And it's all about pressure, keeping the pressure on the ball. She's also showing, showing them how she wants that double team and where she wants it to come from. So we've got 10 minutes of basketball left to play. Sheffield up by 21. There's some, some comeback if the Eagles want to pull this off because they've only scored 15 points a quarter. Good crowd in tonight, Dave, as well. And it's nice to see people turning up for the WBBL games. Yeah. Be interesting to see what happened. I heard the point you made about the game against the Caledonia Pride. That, that Pride are playing well. I saw them beat Durham last weekend. Uh, pretty even game right to the last minute, but uh, Pride had better game management just at the end. Yeah, seem to be starting to build a bit of a program back up there. In well, I've Scotland. got a lot of time for the coach, Bart. Yeah, yeah it's I th he's been here seven years now. Yeah. Obviously, he missed quite a bit. I think it was last season or the season before. I don't know. I think he had a s quite a serious injury himself to his knee, but it seems fully recovered. Yeah, that'll be a good game. It's and especially is because both teams are sort of just in and around that last playoff spot and yeah. both teams will want to you know, try and get yeah. there. Sipic. Yeah, and, and, and looking ahead to that game, Pride have got an American girl who was absolutely outstanding in the game against Durham. We're looking forward to seeing that. It's an awful lot of contact going on down there. Well, I guess if the referees are going to let it go, that's fine. As long as it goes both ways. Yeah, just a matter of, isn't it, of knowing what to blow and what not to blow. Yeah. New key brings it up over halfway. Stewart hit the heel. Two person game here. Chukueta does quite well. Shot clock ticking down, down to four. Oh, no key for three, doesn't go, but it does hit the rim. Naomi Campbell and Dora Simic battling with that one. Sheffield ball again. Looking with interest at that last defence, I think we might have been seeing a little bit of 2-3 help recovery defence there. Sideline, the end line ball, end line ball for Hatters. Heel and Stewart, White House. Back to Gale, she does like that long three, doesn't go in. Murphy takes a rebound. Be her seventh or eighth rebound of the night. And then the Simic, that's a travel. Big step before she bounced it. Yeah, pity that because a really good uh, drive and kick move by Fernandez. She sucked the defence in and then kicked it out to Sipic, who cre nice created a nice driving lane for her. Turnover though by the Eagles. Sheffield coming with. Georgia Gale this time didn't take the three. Whitehouse will from the corner, and I thought he was going to make it, but that's a great rebound by Stewart. Doesn't make it, but it's Whitehouse who gets inside there for the rebound and puts it in for two points. Mm -hmm. I must admit, I have never seen uh, Stewart and Whitehouse play before, and uh, to me, they're both doing a pretty good job for the uh, Hatters. This is where they've, they've, they've attacked really quickly, haven't they, in transition. Georgia Gill pops up the three, doesn't go in, but good rebound by Campbell. I mean, I don't know enough about these girls, but I mean, probably, I know that the, the Hatters have had a really good development program over the years, and it's very likely that these were a product of that. Yeah, they do. Certainly, Whitehouse looks a, a, a younger player. Stewart looks a little bit older, but um, interesting. No, that obviously the Hatters, as you say, have managed to plug their gaps a little bit better than the Eagles have. McVicker for two is off. 
seems to be two shots to one at the moment in favour of Sheffield. They seem to get George Gale's going to go to the basket here all day long. Just make it though, McFicker gets the rebound. She's going to drive hard. Well, I'm not quite sure what she did. Well, well, you know what? Actually, that was a good move because yeah. she was driving hard at the defence. She saw him cutting off the route of the basket. She slowed down and tried to turn it into a floater but just didn't quite get the execution right. But it was it was a really good move and it almost it's imp almost impossible to stop that type of move. So Stuart and Whitehouse come out and in come the next the scorers, Neela and Horton. So Sheffield starting five, so they're keeping the pressure right yeah, on. Yeah, obviously young players they could give a chance to on the bench, but they're going with the vets. Gil tries to force the pass through, Eagles come away with it. Chukuretu back to Sipic, Sipic for three, is off. Again, I can't quite get there for the rebound. Sheffield again, that's a great skip pass. Nice return pass by Fonglu Key, and she knocks down the two from Helen Naylor's yeah, pass. Lovely basket. How work. easy did uh, yeah. Helen and Nicky make that look? Absolutely. No rush about it, no panic, just clear, clean, good, ex basic execution. Again, the Eagles, if you look at them there, not taking up really good spacing. That was a nice oh, pass and a nice coach. Super move. Yeah, she's nice drawing in confidence, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking, she's got seven points, but she's also got ten rebounds. Dora Sipic, excellent move. Good pass as well from Fernandez. But uh, this is the problem. It's it's just too easy for Sheffield inside. Yeah, well, F Fernandez just didn't pick her up. Yeah. And the Eagles decide, I think, to call a timeout. Again, basics. See the ball. See. Say Dave there just before well, to, to, to play good defense, you've got to know where the both the ball and the, the person you're guarding are. And what happened there was Fernandez focused on the ball, player cut in front of her, and it was too late. She reacted, but it was too late. We're just having a quick look at the scorers. Nicolette Fong Luke has 18 points, Georgia Gale 15, Helen Neal at 12, Ebony Horton 10, and Abby Whitehouse 9. High rebounder is also Ebony Horton with nine, so only one rebound away from a double-double. Helen Naylor has seven rebounds. For the Eagles, top scorer is Chloe Gaynor with 13. She has seven rebounds as well. Maddie Mafika has 12 points. Marina Fernandez has a 9.7 rebound, seven assists, game going. And Dora Sipic, seven points and ten rebounds. I must be honest there, Jeff, and say when you said that Nick Led had 18, making her the top scorer, I was a little surprised until I started thinking about the game. And she's doing a lot of work to get off and off the ball, and she's quite good at hitting those open shots. Nice runner there from uh, Chuka Etu. Yeah, Ori going. Go, Ori, go, Ori. That's <laughs> the sort of move we want from you. I think that's the sort of move she needs to make more often. She, oh, yeah, defensive play and her yeah. hustle's really she's good. She's a hard worker, she's athletic. But she doesn't always seem to trust herself when it comes to going to the basket or well shooting I've, the I've ball. also seen her knock the threes down as well. And meanwhile, Fong Lu Key goes to 20 points. Seagulls just don't seem at all able to stop Sheffield from scoring. Well, y you know what everybody says about defence, Jeff. It's got to be consistent for 24 seconds. It's no use playing it for 20 or 18 or 22. You've got to play it for 24 seconds. Nice pass from Mark Vickai into Sipic. Sipic makes the two. So this is where it's, you know, that, that ball in all under the paint always seems to be available. 
Nicolette's well, filling the basket up today. I rest my case. Yeah. She's getting on the end of, isn't it? Three, you know, three, four, five ball movement passes, and knocking down the shot. Steal by Naomi Campbell. Here's the near. Doesn't make it. Marina Fernandez picks up the rebound. Flirting with a double, a triple double. Marina Fernandez in a 20 point, 25 point defeat. Quite amazing, really. Georgia Gale coming back in again. Ebony Horton coming out. Molly Arnold gets some time. Marina Fernandez taking a seat. Actually, we should go for a quadruple double. Is it triple double? Quadruple double. Because she's got eight, eight turnovers as well. She's having a seat now, though. Right. Naomi Campbell will watch the replay of that and realise it was easier to make the layup than it, it was, was to throw, pass, it? <laughs> throw it out. And that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Absolute rocket pass out <laughs> to the wing. <laughs> she was almost under the basket, unmarked. Yeah. <laughs> Body Chukwetl comes back out. Fifty-one seventy-six. Four minutes to go. Again, I find Molly Arnold, who's come on for her first minutes. Unfortunately, that pass is, I think she should have put it in first time. Lane Murphy just moved slightly to one side, and that meant it went straight out of bounds. Jason Nate. Campbell. Nicolette, it's the long two if it goes, but didn't go. Mark Vicker picks up the rebound. And that's going to be a foul. You know, what, what the hat has showed there was one of the basics of modern day offense, is that is wide spacing, constant cutting, and multiple cuts. I think Gets Nicolette free, made three, I think she made three good cuts in that offense. She had a fine game, really. And it's not just to talk about the points, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it really is. I mean, the, her. Helen Neal and Georgia Gale have been the, the three real standouts, but the supporting cast hasn't been bad either. They've done all right. So again, this pass was intercepted, but she managed to pick up the, the ricochet. Molly Arnold. Back to Mac Vicker. Mac Vicker comes, steps back for three. It's short. Georgia Gale yeah. picks up the rebound and is away to the races. She's going to go coast to coast, is she? No, she's not. Back, good ball movement. Naomi Campbell comes off the basket. Throw again, that takes the rebound. It's a really good rebound. She must have picked up a good fair rebounds on the stats today. If we give her that one, that should be it. Feels like more. Set pitch for no points. Lane Murphy, great offensive rebound and put back. Flew through there, knocked that one down. Takes her up to eight points personal. And if she's given an offensive rebound, yeah. it'll be nine rebounds. Well, you have to say that Gaynor reacted there well to the crowd helping her out with counting down the 24 second clock and how many seconds would it go. <laughs> but uh, Murphy did an even better job there getting in after the offensive boards. The two handed tip in. Makes the free throw. 2.34 to go, 54.76. Just a question of who can do what now for their own probably personal stats. And here's Georgia Gale shooting the three, doesn't make it. Dora Sipic takes yet another rebound. Lost the ball, but Chloe Gaynor has settled it out. Molly Arnold for three. Molly Arnold locks down a three. <laughs> Can't argue with that, yeah. <laughs> Ideal <laughs> Premier fast break. Three point almost at the other end. Gain Two passes, one shot, boom, down it goes. Eagles bench reacted to bench player Molly Arnold knocking that three down. Do you know what? She she saw the gap, she wanted to split it. She just didn't power dribble that ball through. It was the dribbling skill that let her down, but certainly the vision was there. Eagles get the ball over halfway to Mark Vicker.
ball off Molly McFickers feet but it just hit the Sheffield player on the way through Molly Arnold coming off to be honest I would probably have just left Molly Arnold on I don't, I don't see any reason why to make that change you know, 133 57-76 Sheffield call a timeout well they have you know and, and, and the Eagles are facing a loss here at 57-76 but it's one thing you've got to say is they've not given up. No. They're continuing. I mean, you know, it's like I watched Durham first half of the season. They were losing all the games, but they were still showing some spirit. So just have a quick look at the scorers. Nicolette Fong Luki has 22 points and six assists. Georgia Gill, 15 points. Hal Neela, 12 points and seven rebounds. Naomi Campbell, 6.6 .6 rebounds. Ebony Horton, 10 points, nine rebounds, five assists. <coughs> Abby Whitehouse, nine points. For the Eagles. Chloe Gaynor has 13 points and 9 rebounds. Manny Maverick at 12 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Zora Sipic, 9 points, 12 rebounds. Liam Murphy, 9 points, 9 rebounds. And Marina Fernandez, 9 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Well, you know, we've mentioned that uh, the Eagles haven't quit. They've kept playing. And you, you've got to realise, uh, you've got to be... Rea reality here new coach very difficult situation losing key players in ebony abby uh, fofovich now injuries to deal with as well but uh trust in no earlier she's she's i think she's spanish she's been here i think off and on for about 13 years she knows this game very well and she's got the ability to help this team to recover from that position and if the players keep showing this sort of spirit look at with that one again well, that might be a double-double for, for Lane Murphy, and you can't ask much more than that. Yeah. McGrath back on. Georgia Gale. Alan Neal for three. Knocks it down. Takes it to 15. About nearly up to the last minute. Sheffield still got the press on, even though they're 20 points in front. Molly Arnold back on. Ian Murphy. Yeah, it's going to be a foul. Given on Stewart. Neither team in the penalty, though. Yeah, if you, if, if you sort of freeze that in your mind, Murphy caught the ball and players are coming in towards her. Go, go away, kid. Make some back cuts. <laughs> Just watch another referee. Say, give, her, give her some space. And neither player moved an inch. Arnold, Fernandez. Oh, what a great pass. back cut. Oh, it's been given as a... That was one of the moves of the match for the Eagles. And what has happened there? He's given it as a charging call. Speechless. Well, I'm just looking oh, that was I'm absolutely terrific play by the two of them. One player on great back cut to basket. Can see any any charge there at all? There's been some very very strange calls. It has to be said, but then again, I'm not a referee. Well, I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Catherine, Catherine McGrath. There. Charlie McGrath knocks down a three. It's a 23 point lead. It doesn't feel like a 23 point, but I think Sheffield have been more very much more efficient. Oh, on they've offense. certainly hit some big yeah. shots in this yeah. second half. Shooting percentage must be and it's, pretty it's good. not just one shooter either. They've had a multitude of people knocking shots down. <laughs> Helen has just got to hold on to that ball because she knows at the time. That <laughs> and that's it. It's 82 Sheffield, 59 Eagles. A well-deserved win by Sheffield. Eagles showed 
some good spirit, some good effort, but they're lacking probably at least one score, if not more. And uh, Sheffield have just got them extra, extra one or two scorers who can just get them over the line. Well deserved victory. Um, we'll be back here on the 25th for the next Eagles ladies home game, but we've got a home game for the men on Friday against Manchester Giants. Uh, that game in front of the Sky Sports cameras. Last word for you, Dave? No, I think you, you, you summed it up well there that, uh, you know, 82-59 seems like a big score, but I mean, I don't think at any point in time did those Eagles ladies give up and uh, the crowd I thought were good for them and, uh, you know, you have to admit, accept that Sheffield had the superior firepower. So that's it from Dave and I. We'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed it and... Uh, Thanks for tuning in, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Bye.